So, I'm actually going to take here. I don't even mind bringing my knight all the way back. Okay, we'll bring the pawn up. So it doesn't negate any of the other stuff. It supports the other stuff, really. Uh, the new addition to the system. Just bring the queen here. Knight obviously comes. So the protection of the king, it's a different take on the protection of the king in sense of if there's activity still going on on the board before the king actually traditionally castles, then by oh, then by all means go for that. So long as you're aware that your king is still safe where it is, there's nothing immediately attacking it, and then give it the options of traditionally cat. We take his knight gets developed. I'm gonna take, keep it simple. And I'm going to bring the bishop here. Again, in this position here, there's no rush to actually castle the king, but there's less meaty pieces on the board to actually do damage to the king. Could go for an exchange of the bishops, or we could just try and push the smaller piece on. But in this type of position, I think going for a potential exchange of the bishops works for us. Helps to simplify. So, I mean, this pawn coming here, it's doubling itself, so maybe the knight's just going to take anyway. Then it's going to be on this pawn. If we push on, then the knight actually comes here and we, it's got our um, rook. So we're going to do a smaller piece attacking the higher piece, see what he wants to do. I think that might um, entice them to take. Whoa, they haven't. Again, there's no rush for us to actually go running castling at this moment. Let's keep the tempo on and try and smaller piece attacking a higher piece again. Let's see if we can get away with that. Maybe develop the knight out. So then our king's got options of queen side castling or king side castling. Looks a little bit disheveled on the queen side at the minute, but it doesn't mean that we can't go and castle that side. So they have moved, could bring the bishop here to attack the knight. Just develop the knight. So I'm actually just developing the knight. It can swing to the side to attack the bishop if need be, but I'm, I might save that. I don't think there's any need for it at this moment. So they're developing their knight. So we could queenside castle. He does have pieces on there, but also he does have the diagonal to this pawn. So in essence, might not be a good touch. Bishop could attack the bishop. Maybe the knight jumps in, looking to get a little bit fancy. So, mm, uh, let's hang fire on that. Now it could attack the bishop like we said. It then is a bit on the rim if it goes here. Where does it go from there? Smaller piece attacking the higher piece, but he's got two pieces on there. Bishop could attack the knight. It's not x-raying through anything. Or we could just castle kingside. I think it's fairly safe to castle kingside now. Let's castle. Everything else has been done now. We've attacked what we could in a safe zone, so I think they'll go and castle as well. So yeah, that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. Now they're starting to push towards the king, but there's nothing to panic about too much. Could bring the pawn, double the pawns now, start hitting this pawn, I know their bishop's protecting, get the pawn in the center, Two pawns in the center can't be too bad, can it? Anything else? Don't really want to do with this one. Not interested in that. I think we're going to simply just attack the bishop. So currently a plus one out of that, so we're maintaining the momentum, so we've got to keep the initiative up as far as I can see. Could attack now the, the knight. Maybe they're looking to go here, so they've put pressure on here. So in the meantime, 
let's beat them to the punch in terms of any sort of attack. So if we do take, they may jump here, but then the bishop can take it off the board. I think it is the slight, I've, I've still got to get used to it, the, that rhythm of, you know, the castling aspect. Um, because by the time I've usually castled, it's really dead quick. And then, you know, my pieces are doing a different type of, yeah, so it's jumped there. So we'll capture, like we said. So it doubles the pawns, but he might want, want the pawns double, so he's attacking this pawn. Is there anything else? No, let's just um, go with what we said. At night, swinging around, attacking the bishop. Let's attack the bishop while we're thinking. He's probably coming here to attack the pawn. Not doing that, so he wants his pawns brought back into line. So I think we'll take the bishop. Bishop can attack this pawn here. King gets the castle then. Oh, he's not actually going castle, he's protecting. Bishop can protect the knight. Knight can attack the pawn. Pawn, at pawn hits him, brings the knight back around again. Anything else? Does this bishop thing look quite nice? Bishop here. Open up the rook. Protecting the square is the knight. That looks quite nice. Knights hunt the bishops in our mantra. Let's not forget that. So let's take this bishop off the board. Give them something to think about with the bishop attacking the pawn here. Also defending this pawn because the rook is going to be chomping at the bit to get this. So trying to keep that initiative, try, you know, based off of the late castling type thing, which allows us to keep that momentum going for the initiatives if there is any. If there isn't any, then you just castle, you know, and um, be done. Yep, so give them something to think about. Bring the rook up. Look to double. That seems to make sense. Maybe give the king a bit of a fly square of some sort. Okay, let's go for the simple doubling first. So as you can see, we're a minor piece up as well, out of those exchange, exchanges, just keeping that initiative going. I'm actually going to double, like we said. With this credence and getting the bishop here to see if we manage this square. Okay, so the king's coming down. It's looking like it wants to be a lively king. Get the rook up. It can't come down, it has to go up. Is there anything else? It looks like he's just getting away with it. I'm going to put the check on in the first instance, maybe get this pawn off. Okay, so this... Uh, again, quite like this one. Look. Then the can't take, but then I suppose he can come here. But then if he does that, then we get the rook for free. So I think I like this rather than the rook taking the pawn. Yeah, let's do that. It's key square. So if he then comes here, as we said, boom. Which naturally you would want to probably come here thinking, oh, I'm protecting stuff. But the rhythm is going to be down. So the king can't move here, can't move there. There's nothing the king can do. So if we get to push that off, then if the rook takes, then yeah, so there's not a right lot. Put the check on. It's not a checkmate thing though, because he's going to escape and I don't want him escaping. His king's going to come down here and get the pawn. So which one do we take? We take with this one. No, wow, oh, it's not taken. It's not taken. Shame. <laughs> oh, dear.
be okay. Let's just got to be careful. He might sacrifice the rook and have a stalemate thing of some sort. But he can move here. This block always well, opened up a gateway. So this area is blocked off. So if we went bishop here like this, and then he goes across, he's going to get time to go across here, isn't he? So are we safe for just going with the rook here so we can hit this pawn? Yep. So we're not hitting the pawn, but uh, well, yeah, he's got space here, hasn't he? So we don't want him escaping, really. The bishop could come here, and then I don't know where he goes from there. Bishop comes down, our rook is defending our rook. King can't take the bishop, can't go down, so that would be checkmate, I believe. Yes, excellent.